Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and this week I'm going to tackle the exhaust and also I'll have about round 37 on the windscreen install. Alright, before I get going, I'd like to uh, say a big thank you to our Cosmal at uh, X Factory. He's actually sent out a uh, 2.7 cylinder for me. Um, so hopefully we can get those moving on the engine rebuild front. Um, he was actually uh, one of the inspirations behind doing this grill. He actually does these things. So if you don't want to build one yourself, um, go and check out Al. He actually, he actually makes them up with the kit, ready to go, and uh, it's uh, quite easy. And he also does some really cool things with ITB uh, and EFI mods. So uh, yeah, check that out. Anyway, thank you very much, Al. Uh, now let's get stuck into this exhaust. All right, so this week I thought I would have a go at tackling the exhaust. Now, as you can see, this is the pretty much, as far as I know, the standard uh, rear muffler for these early cars. A two in, one out exhaust and um, Inside here, there's a, a range of baffles and, and bits and pieces, and I'm gonna put dual outlet tips on it, and making it work a bit better, and uh, breathe a little bit better, and hopefully look a bit better too. The headers on this already look pretty good. They're in pretty good condition, uh, and they look like they would flow reasonably well. Uh, so, I don't really wanna mess with them. I will look at doing heat exchanges, but that's probably gonna be further down the line, because um, obviously they have nothing at the moment, and I want some heating in this car. First things first is, um, I really need to cut this open and see what's inside, and then we can go from there. Okay, so I've cut the top off of this muffler and um, currently each side comes in at the bottom down here and there's another one down underneath, underneath down there. They come in and the bottom of the whole muffler is all open. So the exhaust travels along the bottom from both sides up through this whole plate here, through out here, out this end, back into here, through a little bit of uh, muffling with this uh, perforated pipe here into this sealed chamber. Back through, a bit more muffling at the end here, and then comes out. Originally, I was going to try and have the pipes coming out sort of here-ish in the center. There are people who do that, but basically, I mean, the exhaust would come straight out and then go straight out here, and it would be really loud, uh, and uh, I don't think it would be suitable for what I'm looking for. So, my plan, is now looking at the original RSRs, they actually had the exhaust tips coming out of either side. So in these baffled end areas, I'm going to remove this section, cut a hole in here and a hole in here, and just have the exhaust coming out of here. The first thing I've got to do though, this whole thing has been dented in, so first thing I've got to do is get in and try and see if I can actually panel beat this thing back out to the shape it's supposed to be. I've done a fair bit of panel beating here and I've pulled the big ugly dent out of this muffler and I've got it looking a lot better than it was. It's definitely not perfect. There's still a ripple in here and it's very difficult with the way that these things are welded inside to get it absolutely perfect, but it's gonna be a satin color anyway and hopefully sort of not stand out too much. So I'll leave it like this for now. If it really bothers me, I'll have to buy another muffler later. Now that I've done the panel beating, I actually have to modify the flow for my twin x exhaust so um let's get into that the first areas i have to modify is in this plate right in here in this chamber i need to drill a big hole through there and also another big hole through here all right so you can see here the uh, the holes i drilled through the base it's not pretty, but it's just open it up quite a bit through there and open it up through here so that you get nice clean airflow from this bank of the exhaust which comes in from there and then comes up and it'll go through here and underneath 
and it's open all the way underneath so that both banks can actually intermingle and um, and balance out but hopefully the bulk of this this bank will come up through through these here and I've actually gone through it's probably a bit excessive but I've enlarged a lot of these holes so that it can get better flow in through and out of this exhaust here and uh, and on this side it flows straight out here straight out and it will go out the exhaust on the far end my next challenge is to mount up the exhaust tips coming out from this end and from the far end for these exhaust tips what i did is i just went down to my local exhaust shop and i got two lengths of two and a quarter inch uh exhaust pipe just off cuts so now i need to work out exactly how to mount them where to mount them how to mount them and get them straight and square and level and all the rest of that because that's going to be the fun bit And welcome to another installment of forgetting to turn on the microphone. Basically, what I'm getting to here is I'm attacking the windscreen for the 37th time. Now, one of the issues that a lot of people brought up that I may be having is the fact that I had a non-genuine windscreen rubber. So, what I've done is I've gone and got a genuine Porsche windscreen rubber. So, hopefully, this will sort out my issues. So... Let's try fitting it and uh, give it another go. left it overnight because I was paranoid it would pop back out again but it's in and it's staying in I've got a few little bits where I've just got to adjust it and get the trim to sit nicely and there's a few bits of the um, the headliner that needs to be sort of tucked back underneath the trim inside but I'm just gonna leave it for now it's in it's sitting there I'm still gonna go around and uh, and actually use some silicon in some spots which was recommended by the windscreen guy to stop it leaking uh, because even though it's a genuine rubber they can still leak. I know heaps of you out there have them that they still leak and I don't want it to leak. So I'm gonna do that, um, but it's in. Yes, the genuine rubber was the ticket. I don't know why there's not much difference to the other rubber. I don't know, but it worked. It worked, yes. Okay, so I've got that other side, I've got it square and level. What I've used is I've cut a couple of lengths of timber exactly the same length to use as a bit of a jig. It should be keeping them so they're not gonna go up and down and uh, these will keep them so they don't go left and right, so we should be good. So now I need to trim, mark, cut this one and um, go through the whole process again and hopefully I'll have a, uh, a second exhaust tip. As far as links go, I've just left it for now. I'll probably cut them off later. I don't know how long I want them. So they're a bit longer than I need and I can just trim them at a later date and, uh, and tidy them up and it should be uh, nice and neat and even. So my uh, exhaust tips are both tacked into place and they're looking pretty good actually. I'm pretty happy with how it's all turned out. So now all I have to do is just um, finish welding them all in. That is some truly hideous welding, but uh, <laughs> nothing a, a grinder won't make look a bit prettier and uh, and a good coat of paint. So uh, at the moment, they're done. They're, uh, this top half and bottom half are ready to be mated up. So um, let's give that a go. Okay. 
Okay, so after another round of spectacularly hideous welding, I've got the uh, two halves back together again, so it's all buttoned up, except for the big hole in the end where the original outlet was. So what I've got for that is uh, I've got this piece of one mil gow. I might try and beat a bit of a curve into it to try and sort of get it to match instead of just being a big flat plug in the end of it. Um, so I'll, I'll make it slightly curved and then uh, use a template, cut it out, and uh, we'll weld in a plug. Alright, I've hit it with the grinder now and it's looking a lot neater and tidier. So now all I need to do is um, go over the whole thing with a wire wheel and uh, get it ready for some paint. It's all uh, now wire brushed back and uh, ready to go and I've got some uh, high temperature paint that I'm going to put on here and um, Hopefully it'll look uh, pretty decent, so uh, let's get painting. All right, and that is it. That is uh, the muffler all done, all painted. Um, it's definitely not perfect. It's a little bit beaten up, but um, it'll do the job. And if it really bothers me, I can buy a new one later, but uh, I've got a, uh, an exhaust that's gonna work and hopefully sound uh, pretty decent. The uh, flow should be a lot better as well because uh, obviously I've opened it up a bit inside, but also, before I had one two and a quarter inch outlet, now it's got two, so there is a lot less resistance inside this um, exhaust. Potentially there's some horsepower gains there, I don't know. It's also gonna look really good. I still have to go back and fix the, uh, the headers up because uh, there's a couple of dents in there. I will sort them out, fix them up, and give them a paint up later. All right, well, uh, I guess that must be it's uh, time for fun facts with Mrs. Jeff. Hi guys, did you know that the all-time record for the Nürburgring Nordschleife was actually set in 1983 by Porsche 956? Stefan Baloff was the 25-year-old German who set the record. The 956 was one of the first sports cars to use ground effects, which made them extremely fast but also really tricky to drive on the bumpy track. Baloff's goal was to beat the time set by his fellow Porsche driver, Johann Maas, which he did by 5 seconds. More amazingly was that he was so much faster than everyone else, being 26 seconds faster than the third place qualifier. He was almost half a minute faster than Kiki Rosberg, who was the reigning Formula 1 champion driver at the time. Unfortunately he crashed out of that race and he was actually killed in another crash that took place two years later at Spa, but his record lives on. All right guys, that's it for another week. The exhaust is, uh, at least the muffler is done. I'm gonna have to go back and do the, uh, the headers because there's a few dents and stuff that I still have to remove out of there. But uh, it's coming together. So um, as you can see, we're wearing our new attire. I finally, after lots of people have been asking and asking, I finally organized some shirts. If you wanna help out the channel, you can actually go to our shop page uh, and uh, you can get men's and women's shirts in uh, a range of sizes and, uh, and hoodies. So um, This is a medium for ladies. Medium for ladies, uh, medium men's hoodie. If you want to help, help out the channel, go to the, uh, go to the shop linked in the description below. And uh, as always, if you're enjoying the videos, please like and subscribe to my channel, Home Built by Jeff, and you can follow me at Facebook and Instagram at the same place. And what lady or wife wouldn't want one of these? Exactly. <laughs> See you guys. It's so embarrassing. Yeah. <laughs>